Welcome to Electra Online. Now let's take a look at some of the important factors or elements of the ephemeris data. So this is specific to work with the coordinate systems that we could be using. For example, we could be using the ECF, which is Earth-Centered, Earth-Fixed, or the ECI, which is Earth-Centered Inertial Coordinate System. Now for GPS, we typically use the ECEF coordinate system. And so what are some of these constants and some of these factors that we're using? Well, first of all, we have what we call the gravitational constant, which is essentially the product of the gravitational constant times the mass of the Earth. And so the number ends up being about 3.986 times 10 to the 14 meters squared per second squared. It's a more accurate way of being able to predict where the satellite is going to be. And they, they use the constant G times M. Um, the next one is what we call the Earth's rotational rate in radians per second. How fast is the Earth rotating? Of course, we know that the Earth rotates in approximately 86,160 seconds, and so therefore that's then converted to radians per second, of course, much more accurate than that. And then we have what we call the semi-major axis, which is equal to the square root of the semi-major axis squared. Why do we have it written like that? That's because this is the way the ephemeris data is sent to us from the satellite down to the receivers. Then we have to square that number to get actually the value for the ephemeris. And then it's used in this value right here, which is called the computed mean motion. And that's equal to the square root of mu, which is the gravitational constant. It's Actually, I should say Earth's gravitational constant, otherwise you may confuse it with G, which is the universal gravitational constant. So Earth's gravitational constant is mu, and it's the universe's gravitational constant times the mass of the Earth coming up with that new constant. So when we take that value divided by the uh, the uh, semi-major axis cubed, and then we take the square root of that, we get what we call the computed mean motion. So what is that? Well, it turns out if we take mu divided by a, and we take the square root of that, we get the orbital velocity. Then if we take the orbital velocity, and we divide it by the semi-major axis, we actually get the orbital velocity in terms of radians per second. So a better way of calling this variable is its act or constant. It's the orbital velocity of the SVs, of the, uh, the space vehicles or the satellites, expressed in radians per second. Then we have what we call the time from ephemeris reference epoch. So this time right here is the time of the ephemeris. So that is the time, the middle point of the period of the ephemeris data. We subtract that from the satellite time and then we get the T sub K. So we want to make sure that we understand the difference between those two. Then we have what we call the corrected mean motion. So we take the mean motion, the computed mean motion, which is essentially assuming we're traveling in an elliptical, in a circular orbit, and then we have to adjust for that because obviously it's not a circle orbit, it is an elliptical orbit, so this is what we call the computed mean motion corrected for the elliptical motion uh, rather than the circular motion. So this is assuming a circular motion, this is the corrected value for the elliptical motion. Then we have what we call the mean anomaly. So what does the mean anomaly mean? Well here it's called the fraction of the circular orbit's period since passing periapsis. So here we take the portion of the orbit in time compared to what it would take to do a complete orbit. We take that portion since, so we, take, we time it since it passes periapsis or the uh, or the closest point of the satellite to the Earth, so when it passes that point, then to where it's in its orbit, we take that time difference, and that's the fraction of the total orbit of the satellite, and that's what we mean by the mean anomaly. Now, notice that it's adjusted by the corrected mean motion factor times some time constant T sub k, which is this right here. So we want to make sure that we're dealing with the right time period and correct the right mean anomaly or the period since we passed the closest point to the Earth. We then also have the m sub k based upon the eccentric anomaly. So what we're trying to do here is we're trying to calculate how the eccentricity affects that motion. And so there we have the calculated value which can be done in an iterative process. Then we have a few more 
uh, values, we have what we call the true anomaly. Well, how does the true anomaly compare to the mean anomaly? Well, the true anomaly is the same value as the mean anomaly. It's the distance in angle, for to speak. Well, it's the time period since you passed periapsis. So since you passed the closest point to the planet, to the Earth, to the point where you are now, you take that time difference and you calculate the fraction of the total orbit, but this is assuming that we're actually traveling in an ellipse, and this is assuming we're traveling in a circle. So this is, of course, the more accurate value, and we then calculate it using these kind of complicated equations, where E sub K is actually... Oh, 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 uh, that, that, this, this is wrong here. This should be E sub K, I was going to say. That doesn't look right. So where E sub K is what we call the eccentric anomaly, you calculate the E sub K based upon the eccentricity and the cosine of V sub K, and then you have this iterative process where you get the very accurate value for the true anomaly. In other words, how far have you traveled as a portion of the orbit since you passed periapsis, since you passed the closest point to the Earth. And so what you're beginning to see here is that Distance is a very important part. You want to know, based upon the elliptical orbit that the satellite is in, passing the periapsis, passing the point where you're closest to the Earth, at that point you want to know how much of that orbit have you traveled in, and knowing where that position is, what that angle is, you can then calculate all the various parameters of the satellite, where exactly it is, and those are what we call the elements of the coordinate system or the factors, I like the word factors better, but they officially call the elements of the coordinate system to help us figure out where exactly the satellites are in their orbits. Of course, this is going to make a lot more sense once we show you some examples, but that will come later. First, we want to define all the parameters, we define all the elements, we want to define the ephemeris data that the satellite sends down to the receivers, and then we'll show you how that's actually used later on in the course. And that is how it's done.